somewhere incredibly cool this morning. I gotta say, this is probably one of the best sounding amps I've ever played. I think, for sure. It's a good amp. I had to put this on it because it was missing the... Uh, yeah, the original one? It was That's missing the original cooler. one, you know, and I was like, well, I kept like banging into the tubes. <laughs> so I had to put this on it just to protect the tubes there. I was given the insanely cool opportunity to go to Soundhouse Studios and meet Jack and Dino. For those of y'all that don't know who Jack and Dino is, he's the guy behind Nirvana's Bleach album. He's the guy. He's been making records since before I was born. Now, I had previously made a video about, about a girl and the tone recreation, and Jack's assistant engineer, Evan, hit me up and said, hey dude, awesome video, but I wanted you to know that photo of that amp that you used was actually the wrong amp. Kurt actually used a silver face twin. Jack still has it. We're here if you want to come play it and meet Jack. So it was like, <laughs> Of course, yes, when? Now, as soon as I got there, Jack started telling me all this awesome stories about Kurt, just stuff that I haven't heard before, and I didn't have my camera on, and I was really stupid, but he was just telling me like that he had never seen one of these high flyers since Kurt, and I thought that was kind of crazy. I have not seen a Unibox guitar since then, ever. Shit, are you serious? No, never, not one. What? I don't, you don't see him around. I mean, who's, who's got a Unibars? I would have thought like after all this time, someone would have went in there with one. Once I got there, the amp was sitting there, sitting in the room. And it's one of the first things I noticed when I got there, it was just sitting there. And it was kind of crazy. I knew that was it. kind of a surreal experience for a Nirvana person like me to play like about a girl through it and then to look up and Jack's like right there with me and he's like tweaking the amp and shit <laughs> what is happening and then I attempted to play school but I haven't played any of Bleach in like over a year and so I, I was stupid I didn't brush up on it <laughs> is probably going to be a little brighter than that because the mic is like but dude just hearing that like this i know i'm kind of tripping that that guitar that's like the same pickup so you've got this, it sounds this, the this same. is the fucking tone right here so <laughs> that's nuts you know man. nice work on getting a thanks man. a pseudo univox right obviously has the same pickup it definitely freaked me out because like the first moment i played that chord through that amp i, I totally got goosebumps that was it that was that sound that amp should be in a museum or something like pretty much anything kurt played with sells for an insane amount of money or is in a museum or something so the fact that jack allowed me to come in there to come play through that amp is it was insanely cool of him they're all a bunch of really awesome guys there and i feel super thankful to have been able to met them now a lot of people don't know this jack actually works on his own amps and he had done some mods to this amp so it's not really like a stock twin and he was telling me about it it's just i just made it look a little more like i was trying to get my my theory was yeah since the the schematic of the twins whole right. preamp and output section is 
so similar to the 100 watt basement. I mean, that whole series of Fender amps yeah. from like 1964 right up to into the 70s, all the schematics look almost the same except for little changes here and there, you know. There's too many amps. Oh, but this one, the main change I did was some, I might have increased some coupling caps in size. Yeah. Because uh, there's a couple of coupling caps that go between the preamp and the power amp. And if you make them like the next size bigger, you can sort of get a little more low end to sort of sneak through. Yeah, and, right. Uh, and I also changed out, um, there's a thing called the long tail pair, which is the um, this little the, the phase inverter circuit that's at the, right before the power amp section. And I tweaked that to make it look more like the phase inverter. Okay. Of, I think the 100 watt basement. And another really interesting thing about this amp is it seems to be like a one of one thing. There's these vents installed on the side of it and according to, to Jack and also me, I was there looking at it, it looks like it was something that was done at the factory because there's no holes from where the legs would have been mounted on a twin. So it's such a unique amp, it really is. I When I got that in like 1983 in Port Orchard, had those vents on the side and I've never seen another amp like it. And no, I, yeah, that's definitely I don't a know where they came from or why or who did it or anything. The little yeah. thing that sticks out, because yeah. it would have been about there and, uh, you know, I think there's, any, there's not like a hole or anything where there would have been. There's not even a hole in it where that, uh, oh, you know, that little thing that sticks sides? out that has the lever, that, that the stop there for the little uh, Yeah, the legs. Arm. The, there's not even a hole where that would have been. The wood actually comes down to here. You know what? You're right. They mounted it up higher. Didn't, that's weird. You know, like I don't, I, the amp might have come this way is what I'm saying. What's that's new? incredibly weird, man. And here's what's even cooler. Soundhouse Studios is available. You can book time there. I had no idea that you could, but you can. And I definitely want to be going back. I definitely want to talk to Jack more. I wish, like, I'm really hitting myself now because I, I wish I would have mic'd up that cab, you know, and got the full sound. This is just camera mics. And I wish I would have, like, put a lapel mic on Jack and me so you could hear what we were saying better. But it was all just kind of like a run and gun thing. So I want to go back. So hopefully they'll have me back sometime. It was a great experience. And I'm going to put all the contact info in this video in the description. If you want to book time there, you totally should. Not to mention all the other badass gear they have there. They got a Trident console. There's like Neve preamps, tons of outboard gear. And the live room sounded really, really good. I'm thinking definitely to do all the bleach impulse response packs. I got to go there. That's where I'm going for sure. All right, guys. Well, I figured this is probably a good stopping point. It's currently, what time is it? 4.22 a.m. I don't know why I do this to myself. I don't know. When you guys see this video in a couple hours, I'm going to be asleep. Schedule to upload at 9 a.m. does it by itself. And by the way, I figured I should address the fact that I've been posting so little lately. And the reason is, is I've been spending all my time on the aluminum guitar build design. Like it's about to go into production. Like the prototypes are literally about to happen. And so I've been spending all my time in CAD and it's been... It's been a thing. Like I've taught myself 3D modeling in, in two weeks and I'm not saying that to toot my own horn. I'm saying it to let you know, like I have not done anything else except for 3D modeling and like no sleep for the past two weeks. So yeah. Anyways, I'll shut up now. See you guys on the next one.